The Lord has been very active with me today in speaking and in fact has been bringing me lower and lower over a series of days in order to speak to me this way, I believe. I mean, I pretty much know that because I know his pattern with me. And a lot of what he's been speaking is a message of judgment, showing me wicked the wickedness of people and telling me that he can't give this away for free, that people will pay in the world, they'll pay so much money for so-called healing, and he can't even give the truth away for free. And today he's speaking a message about his name being profaned, his name being blasphemed. So I want to talk with you about that. Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. I don't think Christians understand that this is our responsibility. This isn't just a sweet little suggestion. It's our responsibility. And it would be better if we were not using his name in vain in business deals and to gain quick clout with people. But then we go and set a bad example. But then we misrepresent the image of God. It would be better if we kept our mouths shut and didn't declare that. If we were going to use his name in vain by telling people that we're Christian and then doing all of the things that God told us not to do, all of the things that he's rebuked his people for doing, using unjust scales, cheating each other, exploiting each other, and setting a bad example. Romans two seventeen. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of, a, of the foolish, a teacher of little children, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you not steal? You who say that my people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. That's a pretty serious offense to be claiming to represent the name of God, to be appointed with this responsibility of being the light of the world, but for our behavior to result in the Gentiles blaspheming God's name, speaking evil against God because they're disgusted at us. Can we blame them? I'm disgusted at what goes on. I'm disgusted at people who keep declaring him, but don't do the things, don't put into practice his word. Or when they're confronted about certain things, they just like disappear. Or who repeatedly invoke his name during business deals, but once the business deal is done and they've gotten what they want, they don't fulfill their obligations. I mean, these things are disgusting. I'll tell you the things that God has been putting on me. He has been putting on me that it's time to clean house, that God's people need to do what is written in Isaiah, go my people into your houses, shut your door for a little while till his wrath has passed by. You should understand that this is going to be happening for the rest of the time that we're here. He sends a warning through his prophets. He steps back to see if anyone heeds the warning. He relents when people return to him. He brings wrath when they don't. He brings dis destruction when they don't. And I've been telling you that that's coming. I warned. And now he's pressing it on me again that this is coming. It's been coming. You, you've been seeing it. I've even spoken with you on the channel about the floods in various areas. I mean, these are not floods like we've ever seen in our, in our lifetime. Halls of dorms flooded so that people can't even get out of their rooms. Take a look at what's going on in China. Take a look at what's going on in Europe, in Canada, in various parts of the United States, in various parts of the Middle East. This is global judgment. The waters are turning to blood. These are the things that the witnesses pray to happen. Because we've given our entire lives to do this. And don't think I don't bring my grievances to God that I can't give this away for free. No one wants it. Except for a few in the, our precious assembly. A few people who show up, who do the work, who invest in one another. They're participating. They're not just showing up to see what they can take. So those of you who keep popping in and out, don't delude yourself. What you are doing is not in this. You got one foot in the covenant and one foot out. And I am not going to tell you any other way because you need to hear it just like that. You better decide whether you're hot or cold because God says he's going to spit lukewarm out of his mouth. The other thing that he's been telling me is that it's a time for cleaning house. And so a lot of people are being brought low. And I noticed that in the assembly last uh, Sabbath. 
And I want you to know that we're being brought low to keep us close. It is a time for cleaning house. I don't want you to hear that passage in Isaiah and think, oh, okay, I'm just going to close my door. I guess I'll turn on the boob tube. No, that's not what was told of you during Passover. During Passover, people put the blood of the lamb over the door so that when God sent the destroying angel, he knew to pass over those who had that seal. You don't know if you have the seal unless you're bearing fruit. If you're bearing fruit, then you can say I'm one of the ones. If you stop bearing fruit, it was a false alarm. You need to be brought low in order to stay close because if you start getting puffed up, if I start getting puffed up, I could lose it. Whatever I thought I had, I could lose it. It is a time to go in your houses and cleanse your house of yeast. Yeast is sin. You need to be in active repentance, allowing God to do what he's doing in bringing you low and not fighting him on it. Listen for what he's raising. You know the work. You've been doing it with me in workshop. We talk about it in the assemblies. If you're not involved in workshop, you have no excuse. It's offered to you for free. Those of you who are doing the work, you know what to do. You know how to listen. You know how to connect with him. You know how to perceive what he's saying. Now do that. And I want you to know that this is going to keep happening during the time that you're here. There's going to be warning and then he's going to bring wrath. Warning, then he's going to bring wrath. That's what he's going to do. He's going to keep doing it, at least for the next couple years. As long as the witnesses are here, that's what's going to keep happening. So you need to know what to do. You need to know how to perceive what he's saying and how he's calling you in. The other thing you're going to need to recognize are the chinks in your armor. Anything that you are not dealing with, is going to, that's going to be the thing that takes you out if you decide actively, nope, I'm not going to deal with that one. Let me tell you why that's important. First of all, the obvious, it's a chink in your armor that, that Satan is able to slither into. But the more important issue is that God has raised something in you or sent something in your life that you are spurning. You don't want to learn for the reason he sent that in your life. It's too painful. It's too hard. Whatever it is, you can't be like Jonah. Remember what happened to Jonah. And it might not end so well for you. So sit and listen to what he's bringing up. If you don't know how to listen, if you don't know how to do this work, there are a couple books that are offered to you for free on this channel that teach you how to do the work that the Bible talks about. There is a workshop once a week offered for free to teach you how to live this covenant out. You have no excuse. These are the things that I'm hearing from him right now. These are the things that he is crushing me to deliver to you. So please don't let my offering be in vain. I have no other reason to share these things with you. But the only reason why I share them is because that is my role. That is my responsibility. That is my duty right now. Please discern this message with God.